it, Allie. Boy, in the house. I'm doing it. Wait. Hey, he's coming back. Nope, nope, nope. I'm calling. James, she doesn't want to talk to you. A little after 5 in the morning on Tuesday, surveillance video from this home on Hollow Lane captured the moment a man with a gun kicked in the back door, then used his shoulder to break into the home. Another man with a gun stumbles as he follows the first suspect inside, and two other armed men also walk in. League City Police say the four suspects held the people inside the home at gunpoint and stole multiple items, including cell phones. It's a brazen home invasion. Two armed men burst into a house in Pasadena, Texas. Three victims are ordered to the floor. Then one suspect lifts one young lady by her hair and orders her to another part of the house. Our home is supposed to be our castle, where privacy and security are expected. It is where, generally speaking, our most vulnerable loved ones are found. Women, children, the elderly, and the disabled. In addition, it's where valuables are stored, so we have much to lose. That is why not much universally generates greater fear and anxiety than the prospect of a home invasion. Everyone, regardless of race, color, gender, or nationality, has contemplated and or planned for the possibility of their home being broken into. After all, if you're not safe at home, where are you safe? Today's video revolves around an attempted home invasion. It is unusual in that the perpetrator is known, but the motive is not. Before we dive into the facts of this unique case, however, I'd like to take a second to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. I have used HelloFresh for years, so as I unbox and prepare one of my favorite meals, crispy kicking cayenne chicken cutlets, I'd like to share my personal experience with you. I use HelloFresh because it saves me time and money, and the meals are delicious. Between a full-time job and committing to one to two weekly video essays, my fall schedule is packed. That's why I'm thankful HelloFresh has me covered with a weekly selection of 30-plus recipes and 70-plus convenience items delivered to my front door. This fall, experience a harvest at home with HelloFresh's newest seasonal flavor-packed recipes, such as scallops over butternut squash risotto or balsamic rosemary pork chops. Every HelloFresh recipe includes ripe, just-picked produce that travels from the farm to your door in less than a week. Also, I appreciate the foolproof, step-by-step -step recipes that'll have a meal done in around 30 minutes or less. All you need is some basic knife skills. Not the kind of knife skills that'll get you featured on an episode of The Crime Atlas. I'm talking about basic food prep skills. It's really that simple. To recap, with HelloFresh, I save time and money while eating delicious meals that are perfect. Not just for me, but for the whole family. And packed with seasonal flavors. HelloFresh is a no-brainer. But if you need more motivation, HelloFresh is giving 65% off and free shipping to fans of The Crime Atlas. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code THECRIMEATLAS65 for 65% off plus free shipping. You heard correctly. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code THECRIMEATLAS65 for 65% off plus free shipping. And now, back to our original content. Twenty-two-year-old James Douglas Rail was born on February 25, 2000, 
and was a loving son, brother, and uncle. He was a native of Louisville, Kentucky, and was raised in Ohio along with five other siblings. James attended Fairlawn High School and developed work skills at the Upper Valley Career Center Vocational School. There is no criminal background or history of behavioral problems in school or otherwise. He was described by loved ones as a fitness enthusiast who loved bodybuilding and coaching people in health. He was also a car lover and had three of his own. Friends and family remember James as kind-hearted, fun, and helpful. James and 22-year-old Allison Ducro were in an off-and-on relationship that began in high school and continued for a short while after that. However, Allison told authorities that as of July 2022, it had been at least 18 months since they communicated. Therefore, she was surprised when, late Saturday evening of July 30th, she received a phone call and voicemail message from James. Hi, Allie. It's James. I just uh, wanted to reach out to you um, because I uh, I just wanted to uh, see how you're doing. It's been a while since I've talked to you and I feel like it, uh, I don't know what I feel. I do know that. I do want to talk to you, though. I do. It'd be nice. It'd be sweet. Allison told investigators that she did not respond to James's voicemail. However, Allison's claim is disputed by James's sister, Jessica, who, in a video posted online by DailyMail.com, alleges that Allison responded 10 minutes later with a text message that said, What's up? The following morning, at approximately 11 a.m., a security camera captured footage of James arriving unannounced at the Ducro residence, looking for Allison. It quickly became apparent that he was not welcomed by the home's occupants. Stop it, Allie. Boys, in the house. I'm doing it. Oh, wait. He's hey, he's coming back. He nope, nope, nope. I'm calling. James, she doesn't want to talk to you. I 
I think. If yeah. you left your voicemail and left a message last night. Oh my god. Okay, just send an email. Calm down. He's dead. According to a joint statement by Prosecutor Tim Sell and Sheriff Jim Fry, officers began to render first aid to James using defibrillator pads until ambulance personnel arrived on the scene. At that time, James was assessed and it was determined that he was deceased. The residence's occupants were identified as Allison Ducro, her father Mitch Ducro, and her mother Stacy Ducro. Initial interviews of the Ducros were conducted at the scene. At that time, Mitch Ducro indicated he fired the weapon and admitted to discharging it three times. Three witnesses gave statements and confirmed hearing multiple gunshots. The location of the incident, including the interior and exterior of the house, was processed. Evidence was collected, and a canvas of the residences north and south of the incident site was conducted. James was transported to the Montgomery County Coroner's Office for an autopsy. At the same time, Sheriff Fry and Lieutenant Detective Brown headed to the rail residence to make the death notification and share what was known about the incident. Meanwhile, back at the sheriff's office, formal questioning took place. I'm an investigator here, and I just want to talk to you about what happened today, okay? If you need to take a break during any of this, just let me know. Do you need to use the restroom or anything? Okay. If you'd like to have that water, you, you most certainly are welcome to it. <laughs> Anytime we interview anybody, we just kind of go over your Miranda rights. It doesn't mean that we think you're in trouble. It's just so that you know that you're, you have rights and what they are. Let's just kind of start off from the beginning. What happened today? You want like my whole day or just... Yep, go ahead. We'll okay. start your whole day. Uh, me and my mom met my mom's friend down for breakfast. Okay. And we were there from like, I want to say like 9 to uh, like 10.45 probably. Okay. Where'd you have breakfast? Perkins. Here in Sydney? Yeah. And then we dropped her off. Probably. Where does she live? Oh goodness, she lives over by the fairgrounds. Okay. I'm not, I don't know her like, okay. actual address. That's okay, it's just by the fairgrounds. Yeah, by the fairgrounds. Okay. And then after we dropped her off, we went to the Speedway that's over by that little mini pizza hut. I don't know that address either. That's okay. You're probably talking to the person with the worst addresses in, in the yeah, county, so. That's how my mom is. By the Dollar General? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I think we pulled into the driveway after that. I went like, 10.59 or 11, like, on the nose, because I was like, oh, I'm there for two hours. Okay, so you got into the house, and then what happened? As soon as I got up to the door and was walking inside, that's when he got out, and I seen him walking up, so I slammed the door really fast, and I locked it, and I told Mom and Dad, so Mom yelled downstairs and got Dad upstairs for us. Okay, so Dad was downstairs? Yeah, he was in the basement. You have, like, a finished basement? Yeah, or, okay, like that's family the area. Room, but Dad's cave? Yeah. Okay. So then dad came upstairs. Does, does he know why he's coming upstairs at that point? She said James is here. Okay. And he already had told Clay that James, he, wasn't, he didn't want James back at the house. 
Okay. When you were dating James, did mom and dad like him? Did yeah. they get along with yeah. him? Yeah. yeah. He was respectful of yeah. them? Yeah. Very, okay. very nice. Never did anything to make him be like, you know. Did James get along with his family? With his mom and his stepdad. Yeah, I'm not sure about his biological dad. Okay. So I, his yeah, mom I know they were divorced. Separated. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do they live in Sydney as well? I think his mom and his stepdad do. I don't know about his dad. Okay. What's his mom's name, do you know? If you don't remember. I don't. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, it's a okay. couple. So they live in Sydney. Yeah. He got along with mom and stepdad, but not so much dad. Yeah, as far as that's what it came off as when he was always talking about. Okay. And your family, he was always respectful yeah. of them. Yeah. Very nice. Do you know how he acted when they, he was told possibly by Clay that they really weren't comfortable mm -hmm. with him being there? No. You had, Clay didn't tell no, you anything? No, he, he's not a talker anyway. Okay. So. Okay. He keeps, keeps everything to himself? Yeah. Okay, so Dad comes upstairs. Where is your Where is your downstairs door? I didn't go off in um, your house. So if you come in, in the garage door and all, I don't know. If you go in the back sliding glass doors. Yeah, so we're in that little room where the sliding door is. Mm -hmm. And then you go out to where the living room is, and there's that little hallway right there. Okay. The garage door is right here. Okay. And that little chute where the laundry room is, and then the basement door is right there, right okay. next to it. Okay. All right. So he came upstairs. Yeah. And then what happened? And then I kept looking at mom. I was like, I'm just gonna call the cops. I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to deal with it. I was like, there's no use. He's not gonna listen. She's like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. And then we started talking to him through the ring a couple times. And he just like had his head down, his hand behind his back. And dad's like, well, I don't like that. Did he knock at first, or was he just he, he kept at ringing the doorbell? So he, he did yeah. keep ringing the doorbell. Yeah. Okay. And once the ring doorbell rings, when you start talking to it, it just starts recording. Okay. So you can hear Dad and Mom both, because I was like, I don't want to talk to him. Saying, hey, man, like, she doesn't want to talk to you. It's best if you just leave for right now. If she wants to reach out, she will. And he just stood there and kept ignoring him. So then Dad went out to the garage, and he didn't go around the corner or anything. He just stood there and was like, hey, man, trying to get him to answer it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then he tried starting to fiddle with the, uh, the door handle. Okay. And Dad's like, I don't like that. So he goes and gets his gun just in case. And where does Dad keep his gun? Uh, in his bedroom, I believe. I think it's in the nightstand next to his side, but okay. I'm not positive. Okay. So he's standing there. We're still talking to him through the rain, saying, hey, you need to stop. And he's like, now he's like really busting on the door. So Dad goes over and starts holding it shut. But I don't even know how, because he saw my dad. I hope he's a big man. <laughs> he starts like overpowering my dad. And I'm just like, okay. So your dad's on the other side of the door holding, yeah, physically holding it shut. Oh, I was already on the phone with 911 at this point. I forgot that. That's okay. That's okay. And she's trying to get my information. Dad's holding the door. Mom's freaking out. And then, like, I don't know how he broke the glass through the door, but he, like, broke the glass, the door frame, whatever that's called, the jam or whatever, splits off. He's starting to get in. And then... I freak out and I go run and hide because I didn't know what to do. Before that, were you all in the living room? Yeah, we were all standing right there next to the fireplace. Me and Mom were. Okay. Over here. He's still at the door. I mean, I didn't even see when he shot or anything. I just heard it. I hit, I, I literally hit most of the time. That's okay. I probably would have done the same thing. Do you know... If he was on any drugs, or has he ever done any drugs that you know of? He has done drugs. Before. Okay. Do you know what his what his drug of choice is? He liked to do acid a lot. Okay. Back back then, I don't know about recent, because he moved out to California not too long ago and then came back. So I don't know if he like started something while he was out there. Gotcha. When did he come back? How long has he been back in town? Do you know? I want to say maybe a year. Okay. It's not too long, but not like recent either. But. How long was he living out there? Maybe about a year also. Okay. So back then when you were dating him and kind of friends with him, acid was his... Acid and weed and I don't know what else he did other than that. Was he ever on meth or heroin or anything? I don't know. know. Okay. I don't think he would have told me because he knew I didn't like it. Right. And that was his car that he was driving that you know of? I, last time I saw him driving a car, he had a red car. Okay. So I, don't, I don't know about... That's fine. And then you guys just kind of went outside once 
Yeah, they had us go sit out in nurse camp. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm really sorry that this happened to you today. This is not how anyone wants their days to go, yeah. for sure. Is there anything about him that you think we should know about his personality? Has he ever threatened anybody before? Was he like a no, fighter? I thought, I thought he was always very nice. I mean, he worked out all the time. I don't know if, if he did any boxing or anything. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Well, he was okay in high school, but then after he came back from California, he just was different. separate you is just to kind of cover our bases and to just kind of get a line of events of what occurred, okay? I understand. Um, so if you would, I understand, were you um, aware of the text messages that James had sent your daughter last night? I uh, was not. Okay, so your daughter did not share those with you? No. Okay, all right. Um, or it wasn't text message, I'm sorry, voicemail. That I just now heard about. Okay. He was standing up at the So you weren't aware of it? Um, I probably went yesterday. to let her leave yesterday or this morning. Okay. okay. So let's go to this morning, okay? We'll just start from the time you woke up, okay? What happened? Make the coffee, got the cup, go down on my computer like I do every weekend. Just get on Facebook. And mm -hmm. I was watching some Netflix. When they were leaving to go to breakfast, they said bye. And I Where'd they go to breakfast? Perkins, I believe. Okay, just here. Yeah. So it was just you, your wife, and your daughter in the residence yes. all day today. Okay. And um, do you remember what time they went to Perkins by chance? Around about? Nine ish. Okay. And you stayed home alone? Yes. Okay. Okay. And then, um, go, go ahead. I started watching a Netflix movie. Okay. Um, about halfway through it, the dogs barked. Figured they were home, so I got paused that and was walking up the steps about halfway up. And Stacy's standing there. She's like, "You expecting somebody?" And I'm like, "No, why?" And I kind of don't remember as far as they said it was James, maybe, but I didn't hear James because I didn't know who it was. I was like, I wasn't expecting anybody. And he was just standing there. I had the door ringing. I, I think he rang the bell. So how long? So your your wife and your daughter arrived back from Perkins, okay? Um, he pulled in right behind them. Okay, so they did they come in that same front door, or did they enter I the think, garage, or do you I remember? Think they came in the front. Okay. Door. So they came in back in from breakfast, and then when they shut the door, did they lock it? I'm assuming they always lock it. Okay. And how long when they went in the house until James? Um, showed up on your front porch, do you think? I wasn't up there when he wasn't there. When I got up there, he was already at the door. Okay. Were you, were you, so you were down in the basement? Or, yeah. Okay. And then you, so you heard him come home, and then you came back, you came upstairs? Right. When they came home, and your wife asked if you were expecting anybody, okay? I don't think, I don't know if they knew who it was, or maybe they did. Okay. Maybe they weren't sure. Okay. I don't know. Okay. But as soon as I... Because Ellie got freaked out because probably what happened the night, you know, the voicemail or whatever, mm -hmm. knew something wasn't right. And I started getting nervous, you know, because he wasn't answering. Their, they were talking over the ring, telling him to leave. They don't, she don't want to talk to you. Was that over, like, the phone or? I think they were using Or were they just yelling through the door? No, I was thinking it was through the phone. Okay. Through the ring. Okay. And I just got the voice thing. They were good to bear with me. You're fine, you're fine. They were just doing everything they could to make sure that he would leave and that we didn't want him here. And I ended up going around to the garage door, opening it up and walking around. And he's just standing there with his head down. 
And I said, James. I don't know exactly what I said. I know I said his name. You know, you need to leave or something like that. But he would just, he wouldn't acknowledge me. Didn't even budge. That made me kind of nervous. So you you opened the main garage door? The house garage door. Okay. And I walked around. You walked around to the front porch and said, James, you need to leave? Yeah. Okay. You need to go or leave and or something. And he didn't acknowledge you or anything? Move like I wasn't there. Okay. So what That's happened? That's when I got nervous and I went back in, shut the garage door, made sure he didn't Fall sneak in. in. So it's shut. Went in, got my nine. Where was that? On my, my side of the bed in the nightstand. Okay. Was it in a drawer? Yeah. Okay. Do you always keep it fully loaded just for personal protection? Yeah. Or, okay. Do you know um, what kind of bullets you had in the gun? Um, Self-defense. Just like ball ammo or was it um, like it a whole point? It was hollow point. Okay. okay. Plastic, right. I believe, maybe. Okay. All right. Okay. And then... After you um, grabbed your gun from your bedside table, what happened? I went back out, and they were still trying to get him to leave, and he wouldn't leave. And I was, as soon as I, I was standing there, there was debating on whether to call 911. I said, do it. Where were you guys standing at? Right there by the um, table. The, the, the kitchen table? Yeah, okay. the big one. Kind of in that opening there, there was a little bit more towards the bedroom. I said, call them. I want somebody to get here. And, they can take care of us and get him out of here. But then I noticed all that talking, trying to, they wouldn't acknowledge, and I, I saw him starting to jiggle the, the handles and stuff, seeing if it was locked. And that's when I went up to the door. And, you know, kind of wanted to make sure he didn't force his way in. So while he was jiggling the handle, you went up to I try to open the door was, shut. I'm pretty sure I was telling him to stop and leave and get off my porch or something. But I had my nine in my hand, at this hand. And he, then he started hitting it with his shoulder pretty hard to where we saw what he did yeah. eventually. And once I realized he was getting in and the door was open is when I shot. Okay. Did you shoot through the door? I or shot through the window? Through the window part of the door because the door was open and he was coming in. So he was pushing his way in yeah. and I you shot. I had my socks on so I couldn't. I didn't have no grip. Was he kind of pushing you back as you were trying to yeah, hold him? he was moving me. Okay. And that's when I, at first I wouldn't, I was trying to shoot but my clip wasn't in. Okay. And then I freaked out and I finally did that, did another rack and then he was pushing hard and that's when I would, the gun fired, I think three times. Do you know if that firearm's registered in your name, Mitch? I don't think it is. I got it from Stacy's dad. Stacy's dad, okay. And he, okay. Just, he went into the home and... Okay, so he, he just gave it to you, or did you yeah, buy he it? he wanted me to have all this okay. stuff. Okay, so do you know Stacy's dad's name by chance? Um, Gregory Cole. Okay, and then the only reason why I ask is because um, when we run the serial number, I just didn't know if it was going to come back to you or, or whoever. Okay, so it should be under his name. Do you know if you bought it from a store or if you got it from somebody else? I imagine he got it at a store. Okay. okay. Um, is there anything else you'd like to talk about, Mitch? This will be over with, but I know we got to do and do it. Like I said, today we're just covered, trying to cover our bases, okay? Um, And that's why we just want to talk to you separately, just to try to get each one of your stories and um, go from there. Okay. That's so why we did everything we could to get him to leave. According to police records, on Monday, August 1st, 2022, two Shelby County Sheriff's Office detectives attended the autopsy of James Rail. The detectives were informed that James was shot three times, once each in the left shoulder, the right shoulder, and the back. Additionally, they were notified that glass shards were found in the back wound, which was a close proximity wound and found to be the shot that caused the death of James. Later that day, detectives met with Prosecutor Sell and it was decided the case would be presented to the next Shelby County Grand Jury for possible indictment. On the following day, Sheriff Fry and Lieutenant Detective Brown met with Rail's stepfather, mother, and sister at the sheriff's office, where they reviewed the information acquired in the investigation to date 
and were provided copies of the 911 calls, security camera video, and video of the interviews with the Ducro family. The grand jury convened on Thursday, August 4th. Evidence presented included security camera footage, 911 audio, crime scene pictures, a recording of Mitch Ducro's interview, and the coroner's conclusions. Prosecutor Sell advised the grand jury of the law regarding the crimes of murder, voluntary manslaughter, and reckless homicide, as well as the Castle Doctrine and Stand Your Ground laws recently enacted by the Ohio State Legislature. In Ohio, at least seven of the nine jurors must vote to indict in order for a bill of indictment to be issued. Otherwise, the grand jury issues a no bill and the case is dismissed. After deliberation, the grand jury decided by an 8-1 to one margin not to indict Mitch Ducro with any crimes in connection to the deadly shooting of James Rail. Upon learning that Mr. Ducro would not be charged with killing James, the Rail family launched a Facebook page titled Justice for James. In an article by the Daily Mail, the family stated that the grand jury's ruling was upsetting and called for some changes to be made to the law which protects homeowners. James's sister, Jessica, has campaigned on social media for a more extensive investigation into the circumstances surrounding the shooting. Her central claim appears to be that it was out of character for James to suddenly call Allison and then show up and display such aggression. Therefore, in her view, there must be a reason which should be more thoroughly considered. She told the Daily Mail that perhaps he could have gone to the property to be there for Allison to talk to her after getting in contact the night before. Jessica also stated the following opinion to the Daily Mail. From my knowledge, the Ducro family has some connections to the Sheriff's Department and there's an extreme bias. Allison worked as a dispatcher for the office and Mitch is friends with the Sheriff. We are pushing for, at minimum, a full investigation. I feel like that's a very fair thing to ask for them to simply just look into the death and not just to take the word of the people that still have a voice. Jessica also denied that James was ever abusive towards Allison and said she had never heard of him taking any substances. Before April 2021, the state of Ohio had decided that gun owners who resort to deadly force while in their castle may do so without the burden of retreating first. According to Ohio Revised Code Statutes 2901.09 and 2901.05, a person is presumed to have acted in self-defense or defense of another when using defensive force that is intended or likely to cause death or great bodily harm to another if the person against whom the defensive force is used is in the process of unlawfully and without privilege to do so entering or has unlawfully and without privilege to do so entered the residence or vehicle occupied by the person using the defensive force. This is known as the Castle Doctrine. Then, in April of 2021, Ohio became the 36th state to no longer require people to retreat before they can justifiably hurt or kill someone with a gun in self-defense, not just at home or in a car, but anywhere they have a legal right to be. The new law entitles Ohioans to stand their ground. The law's opponents believe it encourages citizens to shoot first and ask questions later. Supporters of the law believe it is necessary to adequately keep law-abiding citizens safe. Regarding the Duke Rowe matter, after a grand jury weighed the evidence and considered charges of murder, voluntary manslaughter, and reckless homicide, the jury, by an 8-to-1 margin, decided not to issue an indictment against Mitch Duke Rowe, indicating his actions were consistent with the state law. However, due to the case's attention, the Duke Rowe's sold their home and chose to relocate and start over. As for the Rail family, it is always tragic when a young person loses their life and we may never know exactly what compelled James to act the way he did at the Duquo residence on July 31st, 2022. With that said, I would like to extend my deepest sympathies to James Rail's family for the loss of their beloved son, brother, and uncle. And what are your thoughts? Is this a clear-cut case of self-defense, or do you suspect there may be more to the story? As usual, feel free to share your thoughts below.